you're on film, by the way, Daddy. Okay. What's the history of this building? I started this building in 2007 as an art studio. Uh, Looking that didn't work out. And this was a, a kit sold by Payless Cashways called the Star Plate Connector Kit. And it had the, it builds a hexagonal, actually it's a pentagonal uh, structure. I call it the yurt now. And uh, the original plans called for you to use 10 pieces of wood or 15 pieces of studs the same length, put it together and you'd have this cute little building. But, uh, and you could get the initial thing done, but uh, they recommended eight foot maximum strut length. So we built it once, we lived in it, and then I took it apart and resurrected it many years later. I like the way the space unfolds when you go inside of it. The walls all sort of go outward. This is the glove technique here. It's good for doing edges and rounded features. A little more mud. Alright, this is how to mix concrete without wearing yourself out. The a bag. There's something with rebar. You put the bag on top of the rebar. You take your knife. You cut your bag. You lift the rebar with the bag in half. Then you can use the rebar to make two bags. 30 pounds instead of 60, or 40 instead of 80, whatever size bag you have. All right, so it's way too dry right now. It doesn't take much water to get the consistency you want. You want it to be kind of like sticky mud. Just add a little bit at a time. Let's do its work. Just starting to clump and stick to the side, and then collapse. That's pretty close. Add a little bit more. It's real easy to overshoot and wind up with a soup instead of mud. All right, that's what I would call a dry mix. Dry for what we're doing. So just uh, little bits of water. That'll transform. Oh yeah. That's looking good now. Let's do this a uh, splash more. That'll probably turn into soup. Okay. There we go, it slides and it flops. That's the look I like, a slide flop. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, you see how it's sliding and it's flopping. Got a wheelbarrow. Holds its shape. It's perfect. All right, tell me about ferrous cement. Well, I started on ferrous cement about 30 years ago when I was trying to build a house, and we learned the technique from a really interesting man, Bob Foot, who had used it for building a, a boat. 
first and it's kind of an established boat building technique. He decided he could build a house with it. And so it's an old technique. It consists of a wire armature. I think the statue of Sam Houston down in Huntsville is ferro cement, basically. If you look at how it's put together on the inside, it's kind of like sculpting if you want it to be. But it's a iron framework. In this case, I used uh, a piece of cow panel, which is like a six or an eight gauge grid. And I put a uh, galvanized lath on either side right here. On bigger walls, I'll put half inch hardware cloth on one side because it's easier to push concrete through. And the concrete, you want to be sure you get a sand mix that doesn't have big rocks in it. The big rocks won't push through little holes. And this, these are kind of flat panels here, which is a disadvantage. But if you're building curved things like domes or curved walls out of ferro cement, you can get very great strength. And and also, if you're if you're really trying to build something flat with ferro cement, you're always going to be disappointed because it's not really a good medium for building flat things. Whereas George Smith used to call it when something didn't come out quite right because it has a nice organic curve to it. Here I'm using a smaller trowel because I'm tired. And with the smaller trowel, you can get a greater force per square inch as you push the concrete through the wire. You want to have coverage on both sides. And once it dries, it'll be quite a bit stronger than you would guess for a one inch thick piece of concrete, which, which is what it is. Ferro cement is labor intense form concrete. And these are retaining walls, actually. They don't have to withhold much weight. I'm just mainly wanting to divert rainwater before it runs under my little house here. So I'll go from the first side, pushing it through as best I can. When I started the project, I was using a bigger trowel. And these boards here are just propping boards to hold it into proper position until it dries. Because also, if you're doing a really big wall, there'd be so much flex in it as you applied the concrete that when you got to the other end, it would be cracking the first end you worked on. So you kind of brace it up a little bit if you're trying to do flat things. But if you want to do flat things, you should stick to more conventional materials in general. What I'm going to do in here is I'm going to build a deck. I built this five-sided building. And I noticed that it always looks lopsided no matter where you stand. So I'm adding a deck around it to give it more balance, more of a footprint in the earth, and to divert water, runoff water, from going under it. I'm going to back plastic back. Make sure I have all my steel covered. This is a drywall knock. I've never done this before, but it seems to work for tight spaces because I. <sighs> and the tried and true method for difficult areas is the hand technique, using the hand as a trowel, pushing it in. And for doing this top detail, just sort of cup it in with your glove. And then you get it all the way around. This is a pool trowel. It's flexible. Follows curves a little bit better. Now, let me mix you some more mud real quick. All right. 
please do.